Well, it's Christmas Eve again. One of my favourite things to do in Christmas Eve is to watch old black and white films from the 40s and the 50s to really create and soak up the atmosphere. Things, oh, films should I say, like It's a Wonderful Life, the original Christmas Carol, and uh, sometimes I even like to watch the Marx Brothers. It's a comedy, uh, a comedy thing, or even Citizen Kane. Anything from that really old, early era of Hollywood, or the Golden Age. The reason being is because I think that that creates such a beautiful, luxurious, silky, nostalgic atmosphere. I also love the theatre. You know, uh, I like to go and see one-man plays or listen to audio dramas. Just anything rich with lit literature and atmosphere because that, to me, is what this period can invoke. And that's the same with winter fragrances. I love fragrances that create a a buzz, create a mystique around themselves. That's what I like to wear in the winter time. And so I present to you some of these fragrances I've never mentioned in a, a list like this before. Some are fan favorites, but I tried to shake things up a little bit. But one thing's for certain, these are not necessarily cozy or comfortable, but they're atmospheric, they're unique, they're thought-provoking, and uh, yeah, let's just get straight to it. I have an honorable mention. This is Tom Ford. Uh, Tom Ford's going to do really well on this list. This is Tom Ford Noir. We want to talk about atmosphere, atmospheres and things of that nature. This, to me, is like a gothic graveyard uh, in the fog. I actually was brought back to this by Chris from Fragmental, who had this in his top ten winter. I've loved this for many years, but this last week I decided to wear it because of his video. And yeah, I remembered to myself how much I loved it. It's a beautiful, beautiful, gothic, atmospheric, mysterious fragrance. So that's an honorable mention. Number 10 is from the House of Chanel. This is Bleu de Chanel Parfum. Maybe not necessarily anything uh, that you'd imagine uh, having this on the, the list, but I've really, really loved this. I've really loved it. I've really enjoyed it um, this year. And I think it's because it's... It's blue and it's fresh, but it's got a lot of depth, a lot of deep um, incense in here uh, that's not overshadowed at all by the, the blue element of this. But when I've been wanting to go out casually and just see friends, but I've wanted something that will be uh, relatable to people, that has that familiar vibe, but also has quite a lot about it, uh, has quite a lot of personality and also can survive the cold. I've won this. Number nine is from the house of Nasamato. This is Duro. You know, when this f first came on the scene in the YouTube fragrance community, people would declare this is like a bad boy type of fragrance, something that was, you know, kind of nasty and kind of really overconfident and cocky. And I kind of bought into that. But, you know, rediscovering this, uh, this, was, this was lost. This was in a... Uh, storage unit in Warrington for about five years. Coming back to it, I, I actually get a very different connotation from this. It's not a bad boy, it's actually kind of like a, a melancholy kind of vibe, kind of like somebody who was very confident, but now, you know, something terrible happened to them and now they've kind of lost all their confidence um, to go as deep as that. There's a real kind of sadness with Duro that comes with this confidence. It's a very complex fragrance and it really has evoked quite a few different emotions and different feelings from me that uh, you know I'm happy to have, but not what I expected. A very interesting, very challenging fragrance to have and I love it. Number eight is from the house of Tom Ford, Tobacco Oud. You want to talk about daring, you want to talk about challenging. This is Something that is kind of wild because it, you smell it and it, it can really be off-putting. It can smell very animalic. It can smell, to tell you the truth, sometimes to some people kind of fecal. But, you know, I've worn this on nights out. I've worn this on proper nights out and it's just worked. 
it's a really unique fragrance in, in that way that it shouldn't work it should be very off-putting but there's something that keeps bringing you back in something that keeps bringing you back in something that keeps luring you and uh, it's very very dark very complicated very complex and um, yeah it's it's just very magical and it's kind of quite sexy as well it's yeah it's kind of like a an oxymoron of a fragrance to be completely honest it's you can wear this conventionally you can wear this on nights out people aren't gonna say anything people actually could enjoy it on you and it has that incredible winter vibe but there are some parts of it that are very challenging and can be quite off-putting to people very unique fragrance I'd recommend that you check it out Number seven is from the house of Hugo Boss, Boss Bottled Absolute, need I say any more, the greatest designer fragrance of 2019, easily. Fun, sugary, welcoming, enjoyable, exciting, accessible, but classy, um, versatile, deep, dark, bold. You can wear this in really deep, cold, freezing weather. It won't even nudge. It's solid performance. I did a review of this. It's the best designer, and if you're looking to me, going, George, what do I buy for winter? I want a new designer. I want a new cold weather designer that isn't too expensive and is going to get me good compliments and get me results. Boss, the scent, absolute. End of conversation. Number six is from the house of Prisina. Nez Naz Quarine. This is a paradigm shift when it comes to smoke and fire. Smoky and fire fragrances usually just kind of go, right, there it is. What do you want? You know, it smells like you've blown out a candle or you've set a house on fire or something. This takes those really, really resinous, smoky, uh, fiery elements and then adds a lot of sweetness, adds a bit of vanilla, and gives you something that is both challenging but pleasant and warming and actually kind of caramel like it reminds me of like Werther's Originals if, if anybody knows what those are it's like Werther's Originals and you're eating them but you've just set half a forest on fire if that makes any sense number five Aaron Terrence Hughes tobacco what's the order again tobacco oud and vanilla I can sometimes get the vanilla and the oud mixed up tobacco yeah oud and vanilla Yo. Wow. You know, when I saw Aaron Terrence Hughes talk about Rochester Man and say that it wasn't very good and said they hated it, I thought, you cocky son of a bitch. You better walk the walk, mate. And when I met him, he gave me this fragrance and he was very lovely, very nice. He's a very big personality. He's quite challenging in himself, but he is who he is. And... I can admire that. I mean, look at me, you know. Um, so we're kind of two peas in a pod in that way. But I put this on, sprayed this on. This is so high quality. It's un it's unreal. It's as good as it's as good as you'd want it to be, and it's as good as you'd imagine. It's just so flavorful, so rich, so beautifully balanced, and kind of has this homemade aspect, which I think is really interesting. And nothing smells as though it's been done in a laboratory or anything like that it's resinous sunny green woods with vanilla and um, just very very resinous very very harsh the vanilla isn't too vanillary it's just kind of like helping every everything else with a center stage and you know the way that Aaron Terrence Hughes described perfume making the way that he thinks about things you want him you, you would assume that his fragrances would be solid and knock it out of the park and trust me no bullshit they are they are everything that they are everything that you would think that they would be number four is from the house of creed royal oud again do i need to say anything about royal oud it's amazing it's grown up it's formal it gets stuff done it's for me one of the most confident uh, fragrances. It, when I wear it, it makes me smell strong. It makes me smell as though I've got huge integrity. That I can get shit done. That I can do things, and that I can get solid. 
I can, it smells to me like I can just get the job done. I've been raving about it. It's amazing. It's one of the greatest creeds they've, that's ever been released. It's, yeah, it's my second favourite after Melissa Imperial now. It's one hell of a scent. Number three is this bad boy right here, Zerjoff 400. This has ever, I mean, this was nearly number one, to be honest. This was gunning for number one because it's got every single thing that I want out of a winter fragrance. But with a little bit extra, a little bit more. Like, it's got this beautifully incense like jasmine. It smells like a jasmine incense stick with vanilla and fruit and just a huge, inordinate amount of sugary sweets with this resinous woody incense in the background. It's magic. The word that I would use to describe Zergio 400 is magic. You know, it's it's got an aura within itself. It tells a very, very beautiful, epic tale of itself. And, I mean, you look at the bottle, it looks like a jewel. It looks like something from, or you know, like a, a Christmas film or a Disney film where there's magic and powers and princesses and all that kind of stuff. And this fragrance is all of that. The only problem is, is that it's been a bit hard to wear, especially just casually. And that's why it's not been number one this year. But number two is number two could be a bit of a shocker for some people. This is Feb Delicious. This has been my number one for many, many years now. And I still love it. I still adore it. I think it's still one of the greatest fragrances ever, especially for me. It's creates such an amazing, solid first impression to people. It gets a ton of love, ton of attention. I think this was my number two most complimented of all time. It's just a powerhouse. It is everything, everything, everything that I have wanted out of a fragrance. And I'm running out a little bit now. I'm going to get a 250 mil because I need this in my life. It, me and this fragrance are two peas in a pod. We're together forever, you know, uh, in sickness and in health. But it was time to let it step down and have another fragrance take the crown this year. And this fragrance deserves it. This fragrance is my number one because it has worked very hard to get here. It's an incredible, beautiful fragrance, stunning fragrance. Maybe not as strong as it once was. I can tell that it's been reformulated a little bit. But uh, yeah, there's only one fragrance left and some of you will know what it is. And it's the one I'm reviewing tomorrow. This is Tom Ford's Tobacco Knee. I used to buy this only 5-10 mil milliliter decants of it. And I'd just wear it on Christmas Day. But then I was like, mm, I want a bit more. And so I'd get maybe a 15 mil a year. And I was like, mm, might as well just get the, the 50 mil. So I got the 50 mil. Mm, I think it's going to be number six in my winter list. Mm, number five. And then this year I just thought, you know what? I adore this fragrance. I love this fragrance so much. And now I've got memories with it of when I went to Estonia, which was a very, very fantastic time. One of the highlights of the year. It's winter in a bottle. I used to say it's Christmas in a bottle, but it is basically now winter in a bottle. It's all of the magic, it's all of the festivities, it's all the mince pies, it's, <laughs> it's all the eggnog, it's, it's all of it. And it's well deserved to be the king. Tobacco over knee, Tom Ford is number one. As you can see, it's a little bit bruised and battered. That's because it didn't have the most pleasant plane journey to Estonia, where I shot a review of this which will be airing tomorrow. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this winter list. I enjoy the excitement, the anticipation. Enjoy being with your family. Enjoy being with your loved ones. Enjoy being warm. Just enjoy Christmas. It's only once a year, and it's a very magical time of the year. I will see you tomorrow in Estonia. How cool is that? But until then... Merry Christmas Eve from the Fragrance Press. <laughs>